Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Let's get between the headlines again today. Now, I have several stories that give us a snapshot into what's in store for the foreseeable future. But I thought I would open the show with something that we can all laugh about, which, of course, is the pot calling the kettle black. Let's look, look, look at this clip here. This is unbelievable. This is Bo Jive in here, of course. Oh, you can't hear that, can you? Hold on, guys. Sorry. Got my um, volume turned down. Probably going like, what the heck, Case? Hold on. Let's fix this. Now you'll be able to hear it. Okay. Back to this. Listen to the pot calling the kettle black. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. That's a great asset. More inflation. What a stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> now, this was a hot mic. He had no idea this was going on. And so, of course, he's going to, you know, write this off as whatever. He, You know, the cameras weren't live. And, or he thought they weren't live. But what a clown. And this is why uh, we've done videos on showing how the last two presidents are basically just clowns. Okay. They are not presidential at all. And there was a uh, movie that we decoded called Creepy Clowns from Outer Space. And it just seemed to to be like Jiven and, and Thump. It was like the two of them that were invader clowns from outer space. Now, it sounds funny, but the implications of this are actually a lot more serious. That this, you know, this alien bloodline, which we know are the demonic bloodlines you know, are here on earth wreaking havoc and clowning all of us, playing with our heads, gaslighting us. And, you know, we're down here having to deal with all this stuff. Now, let's get into some of these other stories today. Now, we all knew that the sticker was the stepping stone to a more complete future agenda, right? We knew this wasn't it. This was just the beginnings of it. And we all knew that somehow the sticker and AIDS are closely related. Even just looking at the Auchi connection reveals that. And, well, you know, we're talking about mooning the city, aren't we? And so all of this is, you know, directly related to the whole AIDS situation. Well, here we go. Here's some, some more clues that this is all going to segue into a different kind of future for medicine. And now they're trying to segue the sticker technology into a cure for autoimmune disorders, including AIDS and a few other things. I mean, was this whole sticker thing just a test run so that they could get data for future applications? I think that's a fair question. Let's read this. It says how Myrna and Dana, I have to call them, stickers could soon treat cancers, HIV, and mooning the city disorders and genetic diseases. So, something's going on here. It says the two most successful stickers developed in the U.S. are both Myrna stickers. The idea of using genetic material to produce an immune response has opened up a world of research. I'm sure it has. And potential medical uses far out of the reach of traditional stickers. So now you see the connection. It's about using genetic material to produce an immune response. Now, as we know with uh, mooning of the city, basically what you have is sometimes your own immune system can go into overdrive, can't it? It could start attacking itself. They call that autoimmunity. And sometimes these things don't show up for decades, years. So here we are at the precipice of putting these things in our body to get a response, but really not really knowing the long-term effects of this because they haven't done long-term studies. This type of sticker has been in the works for 30 years. Nucleic acid stickers are based on the idea that Dana and Raina and uh, make Dana makes Raina and then Raina makes proteins. 
for any given protein. Once we know the sequence or code, we can design a MRNA or a DNA molecule that prompts a person's cells to start making it. When we first thought about this idea of putting code into somebody's cells, we were studying Dana and Raina. The Raina stickers did not work well at first. They were unstable and they were causing pretty strong mooning of the city responses. So they're trying to basically set you at ease that now they've figured out how to fix this instability of this molecule to create these large responses in the body. But I don't buy it. I think there's more to this. I think there's more to the whole AIDS uh, epidemic that happened in the 80s. I don't know if this, it was a result of testing that they were doing. And I know the rabbit hole goes very deep into all that. But I think all of this is connected. It's all connected. Why is it that some people were busting out or reported that they were busting out with shingles after they got the Pokemon sticker? We don't know if there's a direct connection, of course, according to them, until they've, you know, gone in and investigated all of this. But we know that a lot of people, this happened to a lot of people. So that is a mooning of the city response, isn't it? And they go on in this article to talk about curing these types of things. So they're all connected, which is really weird. Now, let's get into some of these other stories. So here we go again. With Vidco or for Vidco? Were you hospitalized with Vidco or for Vidco? I mean, if this isn't a clue about the mind games that these people play, I don't know what is. It's like telling your parents, I said I was going to do the dishes, but I didn't say when. I mean, these are just grammar school games. This is what we get from these people. And they want us to take them seriously and take them professionally and trust everything they say. And they keep getting caught in lies and playing these little grammar school games with us. Now, this is huge because what this suggests is, is that all the hospitalization and death numbers could have been skewed to make it look worse than it was. Let's read this. At least in this case, this is, you know, this is what they're saying. At California hospitals, Many children are coming in with Vidco, not for Vidco. Now, this happened. Uh, there was another story in Massachusetts, and they said the exact same thing. So now, all of a sudden, they're disclosing the truth. Rachel is one of 28 Vidco positive children in the San Diego hospital. They range in age from two weeks to 17 years old. The number of Vidco patients at Rady Children's Hospital rose from a weekly average of five in the first week of December to, uh, to the 28th in the first week of January for at least a year there have been 30 rooms set up to accommodate Vidco patients this is definitely the highest young children those younger than five have been newly hospitalized with Vidco at higher rates than any point of the spam mimic so this is the brainwashing they're trying to whitewash the lie that they got caught in by still making you freak out about it even though they just told you the truth so these children were in the hospital. They had Vidco, but they were there for other reasons. And of course, they freaked all the parents out. And think about how many tens of thousands of parents rushed their children to, to, the, to get a sticker based on these early stories that there was this rash of children getting Vidco and getting ill from it. Unbelievable. Now, this next story has folks angry. And it should. So basically what happened was this woman was found dead after she went on a date and because she was black, apparently they wouldn't even do toxicology reports to figure out what happened to her. Now we'll get into the details of this story, but this is very close to home. This actually happened in Bridgeport, which is literally like 12 to 15 miles away from where I'm sitting right now. So I'm going to play part of this. You guys can see kind of what happened. See if it'll play here. Okay, let me let me do this. Take the sound up here. Now, what happened with this? Well, what this should be Petito 2.0, shouldn't it? Okay? Because look at all of the attention that was put on that case, right? And I know there was a video of her and all that, and that helped 
that helped it gain popularity in the media. But this particular story didn't even make the news until the family organized a protest calling out the police for not doing their job to find out what happened. That was a little bit of a weird situation. You know, this woman showed up, was on a dating app, found some guy and had like basically a one night stand is what it amounts to. And they say she OD'd. Now, black people are upset and they should be. But let me explain something to you. This is not a people problem. This is a media problem. And maybe a bad cop who didn't do his job. This doesn't represent most people, but they want you to think that it does. They want you to think that all white America just ignores black people's problems and doesn't care. And this is how they keep the right left divide going. So I want to give you the prerequisite before I tell you the rest of the story. Yes, the family should be upset. And yes, there might have been a racist cop, but this doesn't represent all of white America. In fact, the white people that I know usually go out of their way to try to overcompensate for what they believe, you know, happened to black people and the unfairness that they were treated with in past decades. And so that's been my experience. Usually white people are just overly, you know, sincere and they're overly friendly. Uh, they, they'll do things for me that in a lot of people that I know wouldn't. And I try to, you know, put them at ease. I'm saying, you know, you don't have to overcompensate like that. Like, I appreciate it. But, you know, I'm not here to judge you or what you, you know, your ancestors did in the past. We start fresh. That's what relationships are about, right? You take people at face value. But the media wants to keep the divide going. Now, what I believe they're going to probably, what they're trying to do is stoke an actual civil war. And, and get us fighting with each other. Because then the elite win in the end, right? So it was the media that went Gabby Bonkers in their obsession to find out what happened to her, wasn't it? In story after story after story. Now, like I said, what happened to this black woman should have everybody upset. But understand, when you're involved in risky activity, like meeting people on dating apps for one night stands, and you bring them back to your apartment... Uh, things can often not end well. They've got all kinds of, you know, things that people put in people's drinks to incapacitate them. This is going on and it's rampant. So as a woman, you should meet at a public place. Let's let's take a look. Let's listen to this. I don't really like this woman here, but let's see. Sue the Bridgeport Police Department saying that it failed my to in, properly investigate the mysterious death of a young black woman. 23-year-old Lauren Smith-Fields was her name. Now, she was found dead in her home while reportedly on most a date people, back in December. You know, people should not be going on dating apps to meet people, okay? We live in a world now that is way too dangerous. The, the question we should all be asking everybody is, why are people who shouldn't need a dating app going on and going on these dating apps? Now, there could be more to the story. I don't know this woman. I'm going to put these headphones in here so I can hear you guys heard the story and you know she could have been gold digging i think a lot of people go on these dating apps to gold dig they see a profile with someone that's sitting on a yacht i mean obviously this woman cares about money it appears she's she's in these pictures in these yachts let's keep listening Remember, the white man whom she met on the dating app bumble reported her dead during their date now he is not facing any charges so cbs news is not releasing his name Yesterday, though, would have been Smithfield's 24th birthday. Family, friends, and supporters marched in Bridgeport to celebrate her life and demand answers and justice. Smithfield's family called detectives handling of the case racially insensitive, racially insensitive, and alleged that the college student civil rights were violated. Lise Preston spoke with the family, which is calling for an outside agency to now handle this investigation. Lise, good morning. This is a very troubling story. Very heartbreaking, Gail. Good morning. Lauren Smith-Fields should be celebrating her 24th birthday this week. Instead, her family is fighting for answers as to how this seemingly healthy young woman reportedly died in her bed. Family photos and memories are what Lauren Smith-Fields' family... Let me interject here real quick before we listen to the rest of this. You guys, there are false flags out there. there this person that went and did this could have been an operative. 
just to make the story do what it did. And then they might have even given the family airtime in the media when they protested. So understand this kind of stuff goes on because this continues to divide. This will be the next, you know, um, what was that guy? I can't breathe guy. Okay, this is what they're trying to create. They can't go too long in the media without allowing some story to come out of unfairness to keep the divide going. Otherwise, people forget. We go on about our lives. We go around and we treat each other with respect because we've forgotten the headlines from six months ago or nine months ago. And all of a sudden there's color unity and everyone's being nice to each other. And they're like, they can't have that. They can't stand that. The controllers cannot stand that. So understand this situation could be far deeper than you can imagine. Let's keep listening here. Is holding on to as they wrestle with her unexpected death. The pain is so unbearable. Chantel Field says she drove to her daughter's apartment last month after not hearing from her. When it was I that street there. 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 Let, me apartment street. Last Let me see. Plymouth and Carver. Carver? It's like Wayne Carver. Remember that guy from Handy Sook? Month after not hearing from her. When I got there, there was a note on the door saying, if you're looking for Lauren, call this number. The family says a detective told them Smithfields had been declared dead about a day and a half earlier, and no one reached out to tell them. He said that she met some guy on Bumble that night, and I'm like, who's this guy? What's going on? He's like, oh, he sounds like a nice guy. Don't worry about oh. it. According to an incident report, the date told police the two allegedly spent the night drinking, eating, and watching a movie. At one point, he said Smithfields went outside to meet someone. Later, she fell ill, but the two continued drinking. Smithfields fell asleep, and the date carried her to bed, where he went to sleep next to her. Hours later, around 6.30 in the morning, he says he woke up to Smithfields not breathing, her nose bleeding. He called 911. The family says a detective also told them to stop calling him for information. They were told he has since been removed from the case. Where all do you think the police department misstepped in handling Lauren's death? Now, understand, we don't know the color of the guy that she hooked up with. Okay, we don't know that yet. But... We do know that the cop was white because this is this is where they're trying to make their case. So instead of being mad at the guy who actually did the crime, they're focusing all their anger toward the, the police department. Let's keep watching here. When you find a young lady dead and there's a male involved, is immediately a person of interest. And they should immediately collect that person's DNA. The incident. True. Report shows police collected money in Smithfields' passport, credit card, and phone. But the family's attorney, Darnell Crossland, stresses possible key evidence like bloodied sheets and drinks was not processed at the scene until two and a half weeks later. Now, it's completely possible that, you know, you know, drinking is not as safe as people might think, okay? You can have an aneurysm, especially if you are on the verge of having one. Some for some reason blood was coming out of her nose. Who knows? It could have been snorting something, or she could have had some kind of aneurysm. There could be a perfectly logical explanation for all this, but chances are there probably isn't, right? If it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, it's probably a duck. Regardless, this is very risky behavior here. And they're probably gonna make the case here too and use this to talk about the police departments being underfunded. And this is why they got behind with stuff like this, okay? Let's keep listening. The scene, we find a pill, we find a condom with semen in it. In a statement to CBS News, Bridgeport Police Acting Chief Rebecca Garcia says there are elements of misinformation being reposted, adding they will release a final comprehensive report at the end of their investigation. People know that black women, black girls, have been going missing and haven't gotten any attention and I think is at a boiling point. We're just asking for process. That's it. Treat these cases like you would treat any others. To lose Lauren in this way, how does that make you feel? A part of my soul died. I would never be the same again. I don't even know how to even move from the next day to the next minute. I'm literally dead inside. So there you go, you guys. So I don't know if this story is going to, you know, develop we'll we'll see i guess but uh 
the fact of the matter is, is that they're going to weaponize this in the media. I just know they are. So let's get into some of these other stories here. Let me make sure you guys are with me before we keep going here. I'm really excited about tomorrow's show. We're going to be getting into, well, I'll just save it for the end of the show. I'll tell you about tomorrow's show at the end of the show today. But thanks, everybody, for showing up. Well, California is going all the way with the sticker mandate, just as I suspected. Remember I told you guys this? A new bill is being proposed to force all school children, not just L.A. County, to get the sticker. Now, if you're listening and you're from California and your children are in public school, this is the final call. This is it. This will go through. Right now, it's a bill being proposed, but it will go through. Your only options at this point, if you live in California, is to homeschool your children. But many of us understand, who have lived in California, that it's almost impossible for parents to do that, to homeschool their children, because both parents have to work in California, because the rents and mortgages are so high. They're the highest in the nation. So I expect a mass exodus of people coming out of California if this becomes law. Let's read this. All California school children must be stickered against Vidco under the new bill. Now, notice how the headline even leads with the command. School children must be stickered. And then at the end of the headline, which most people don't even see, if it comes up in your feed, it says under new bill. So what, what are people going to do? Well, there's some people aren't that bright and they're going to think, oh, it's already happened. So I'll just go out and get it. This is what they're hoping to do. This whole thing is gaslighting and manipulation. Let's read this. California lawmaker, known for tightening restrictions on school stickers, will propose a bill Monday to close a loophole in the state's requirement that children receive the Pokemon sticker. State Senator Richard Pan. Now, we've talked about this guy before. Not only his last name being Pan which is just really weird. But we've talked about him because he's been very aggressive and made other public threats towards what he's going to do about the mandates and children. So he's going to announce this bill Monday morning to add to Vidco 19 stickers to California's list of required inoculation for attending K through 12 schools. Wow, K through 12. Is there even an approved sticker for kindergartners yet? Unbelievable. We need to make sure that children are safe so that all parents are comfortable sending their children to school. What? Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Slow down, Mr. Pan. You might need to go take a nap, Mr. Pan, because you, wait a minute. Make sure all children or all parents are comfortable sending their children to school. Wait, if they got the sticker, they can still spread it and catch it. And I would argue that because maybe their symptoms are more mild, they might not even know that they're sick. And they go to school and spread it to other children. Whereas if you have a strong immune response, a high fever, now all of a sudden... You know the child's sick. You can take them home. The nurse can send them to the office before he infects the entire classroom. So who's really making who safer is my question. It's just a question. Now, Pan is a pediatrician whose legislation has strengthened oversight of sticker exemptions in previous years. And we want to keep schools open. His legislation is a second major sticker bill announced this year by a group of Democratic lawmakers. I think the first one that they announced was the mandatory stickers for L.A. County. I think he was involved in that as well. On Thursday, Scott Weiner introduced another bill which would permit children 12 and older to choose to who choose to get the sticker to be able to do it without their parents' consent. Get out of California, you guys. Get out. The writing's been on the wall for a long time. There's a million other places you can go. And you know what? When you leave, you're going to thank me. You're going to be like, Casey, I was paying two grand a month in rent. And I cut my rent in half. 
And all I had to do is move to a different state. And you know what? California is not even that safe anymore. A lot of property crime, drug, violent crimes, all this stuff going on in California. I know because I was just there recently. Both bills are expected to be met with strong opposition. Yeah, of course they are. But California is one of those states that does whatever it wants. It doesn't care what kind of opposition it gets. So time to run for the hills. And this is what I've been talking about. You know, I get criticized sometimes on this channel, but I always stand my ground because I know that what I'm saying to you is based in the Holy Spirit and it's based off biblical precedent of God delivering people from areas that were pure evil. You got to get out sometimes. And this is an example. There's nothing you're going to be able to do to change this law. So one, you're either going to lose your child if this becomes a law because they'll just come in and say you broke the law and CPS will come in and take your child. Then you'll be really upset. Or, you know, they're going to um, make life really difficult for you, fine you, jail you. There's really no way. Once these things become law, there's there's not much you can do about it except not be in that state. So just a warning for those who are still holding on to some kind of hope that things will get better in some of these states. Now, we know that they're coming for the children. There's another story here. This is out of the UK. They just released sticker passports for children in the UK. Now, I want you to notice something. The progression from paper to digital. First, they gave us these flimsy, dumb cards. And I told you guys back then, I said, this is just the first step. There's no way they're just going to hand out cards that can easily be, you know, doctored and fixed and created and counterfeited they're not doing that that's just a whole ploy to make you feel okay about having some kind of proof and then they're just going to slowly dial up the dials behind the curtain they'll say oh it was counterfeited now we got to move to the next level it's called gradualism and this is how they change things slowly but surely so we went from paper to these apps and pretty soon what this seems to suggest to me is that they'll be wanting us to wear our certification in the form of some kind of tattoo or device or implant. Notice also the progression away from God and faith in this technology and what we're told. Every time you make an incremental choice to trust in the system instead of Jesus, that is when you get into trouble. That's when you're serving another master. Wow. Takes you further and further down the wide road. The, you know, and then as you do that, it's harder and harder to find the narrow road. God help us. Let's read what these people are up to in the UK. Because I know we have a lot of UK folks that come to the channel. Children are set to be given access to a digital vidco pass in time for half term as the government prepares to announce relaxations to travel rules on Monday. So they, they give away a bone, but then they grab something back, don't they? Ministers are expected to agree to scrap a range of measures at a meeting of the vid vidco committee on Monday. The changes are likely to be implemented in early February. So... This is unbelievable. Let's read about this app here. We'll finally be granted access to this app pass. At present, they're excluded from using it, thus curbing their ability to easily prove their sticker status. This presents issues for families traveling to countries such as France, Italy, and Spain, which require all over 12s to be double stickered or else face tough restrictions, such as quarantine or daily testing. Parents are forced to request an NHS letter confirming the sticker status of the under 16. So they got to basically jump through all these hoops. Now understand, I want to explain something to you. The UK is a, you know, relatively small place. It's an island, as you guys all know. And a lot of people in the UK, you don't even have to have that much money to be able to afford it. But a lot of people in the UK have properties in Northern Europe. As you guys know, I was at one of those properties for two years with a friend, Mark. 
And so what has happened with these people is they have basically been prevented, if they don't want to get a sticker, from even traveling to their own properties. Now, properties obviously cost something. There's taxes associated with these properties, upkeep. You know, you got to get over there and mow the lawn. That's what I was doing when I was at Mark's property. I was upkeeping the property. So he didn't have to come as often. He ended up coming a lot anyway, because he, you know, he wanted to hang out with me. But at the end of it, if you don't get out to these properties, they just grow over with weeds and everything else. And so this is really tough for these people. It would be like people in California who had Mexico properties. And let's say Mexico started having this tough stance on stickers and wouldn't let you into your own property. So this is what's going on over here. And it's pretty crazy. So that's what's going on in the UK. It's a UK update. Now, here's another story. Hope seen once the Omicron wave increases global mooning of the cities. So what's going on here? Well, remember all this talk about immunity and all this? And we were told that by catching it, all of a sudden, you know, you wouldn't, it wouldn't have any effect really on your immunity. And that the only way to have long-term immunity was to get their stickers. Well, now all of a sudden they're, you know, changing up the program. Now they're saying this will basically get us to a herd immunity. World Health officials are offering hope that the ebbing of the Omicron wave could give way to a new, more manageable phase of VIDCO-19. So they're now starting to admit that getting VIDCO goes toward herd immunity. Just like they were saying about every other virus up to 2019. Now all of a sudden they're admitting it. But they stopped short of really saying that it would end VIDCO-19. But they're saying we're entering a more manageable phase. Did I skip a story here? Oh, no, I didn't. In the U.S., cases of Crescent are dropping rapidly. Only a pattern of uh, seen in Britain and South Africa. Encouraging trends after two years of misery have brought a noticeably help hopeful tone from health experts. On Sunday... Slouchy said a best case scenario would be where Vidco would fall to manageable levels. So we get back to a degree of normality. Oh, thank you. Oh, holy slouchy. So this is what they're saying here as the, that catching it um, actually is going to help things. And a lot of people were saying this before, but the, you know, the medical authorities would not admit this. What do we have here? Well, as we had anticipated, the you guys remember the Navy SEAL court win about the stickers? Judge overturned the mandate for those Navy SEALs. And I told you it would probably spill over into other branches of the military. Well, it certainly has. One Texas law firm is seeking exemptions for the entire Navy, not just the SEALs. Let's read this. Now, this is great news for people who held out, but this is horrible news for those that caved early under the pressure from Bo Jivin. North Texas law firm seeks religious exemption from the sticker mandate for all Navy personnel. A North Texas law firm amended its lawsuit Monday on behalf of dozens of U.S. Oh, this is the SEAL story. So, it says here, First Liberty Institute filed a suit in Fort Worth arguing that the Department of Defense is violating the First Amendment of the Constitution. And apparently this Navy SEAL case is now amended to seek a class action lawsuit that includes all U.S. Navy personnel. So this is good news. If approved, the class action will protect every U.S. service member who requested a religious accommodation. And why wouldn't a judge rule in the favor of these Navy men. If the SEALs got it, then all the Navy should get it. So this is a good start. Now, hopefully this will spill over into the other branches of the military. 
as this thing starts to wind down. Now let's get into some of our other stories here. Now this is this story is kind of funny because I'm not a bigot, nor do I think anyone on this channel is. But now it's a crime to be a bigot. <laughs> they can charge you with hurting someone's feelings based on your race. Now I didn't know this, but apparently this is the case. Have you guys heard anything about this? This is actually happening in America. I mean, if this is what's in store for America, then you can say goodbye to your favorite comedian because that's all they do is make fun of people. And, you know, what about what if your comments are taken out of contest or they're misunderstood or misconstrued? I mean, this just opens up a whole can of worms. So what happened in this story? Well, this guy was charged with intimidation based on bigotry or bias. So if someone feels intimidated and there's a racial component to it, you can get in trouble with the law. Let's read this story and try not to laugh. This is crazy. Connecticut man charged with making a racist comment and tirade at a smoothie shop. Oh, brother. A Connecticut man has been charged with intimidation based on bigotry or bias, breach of peace, and criminal trespassing. After authorities said he hurled a drink and racial slurs at employees in a local smoothie shop. Smooth move, man. Then he blamed, he, he blamed them for a serious allergic reaction that sent his son to the hospital. Fairfield Police alleged that the man, James Ainazazo, 48, returned to Robex fruit, Fresh Juices and Smoothies located... Wait, I can't even read today. L location Saturday. They don't write these stories like they used to, do they? they the, the words are all jumbled up. Like, make a complete sentence. Okay, so after his son had an allergic reaction and berated staff members, demanding that they tell him who put peanut butter in the boy's drink... So that's that's coded right there, isn't it? Boy got some he got the smooth peanut butter instead of the chunky peanut butter. When employees could not provide Ian Azazo with an answer, he became irate. Yelling at the employees using a number of expletives, police said. He then threw a drink at an employee, which hit her hit their right shoulder. So here's the place here, Robex smoothie. Next to the pizza place, of course, right? Of course it has to be. Wow. Premium fruit smoothies. Police said that Ian Azo made comments to an employee referencing their immigration status. Authorities said he continued to yell at employees and tried to open a door to Robeck's employee area after he was asked to leave multiple times. Ian Azazo, who left the store before authorities could arrive, turned himself into police later. Video purporting to depict him calling one of the employees and <laughs> after he threw a drink was circulating on social media. So this guy got arrested, not because he threw the drink, but because he hurt someone's feelings with a racial component to it. Unbelievable. All this nonsense. Wow. They just keep talking about the peanut butter. Now, I don't know. Do, I mean, don't you watch someone makes these drinks? I mean, couldn't they have seen if the, he put peanut butter in it? I always pay attention. When someone's preparing something for me, I'm at one of these you know, little shops. I like watch what they're doing just because I'm curious about it, right? I don't just go sit in the corner and wait for it to get done. I usually sit there and watch them do it. Not because I'm, you know, think that they're going to do anything, but sometimes I'm curious because I'm like, man, I wonder if I can make that myself. Save myself $6, right? Anyway thought you guys would enjoy that story now this is one of our last stories today they're trying to close the gates of hell in turkey manistan i'm gonna have to call it you can't talk about any of the istan countries because for some reason youtube gets all weird about it this gas crater has been on fire for 50 years. Now there's a plan to extinguish it. Let's read this. Now I truly believe that our plane that we live on here is bound by laws of physics. In other words, it's more than just physical boundaries that keeps us where we're at. 
I believe there are also spiritual boundaries. Now, a lot of this is in the Bible, but when we think about trying to go too high up in the air, what stops us from getting too high in the air? Well, not enough fuel and not enough oxygen, right? And we can't go too low down into the deep seas and caves because in the ocean, there's too much pressure. So we can only go down so far. But something I noticed in trying to reach the boundaries of our existence is how creation drastically changes as you start to approach these two boundaries, the above and below. So in the sky, you start to see lots more demonic activity, don't you? You see strange lights, demonic entities. And below us, in the oceans, in the deep caves, creation begins to start looking very demonic looking. Like the fish and the creatures that you see down there. They don't look like they're from this world, do they? They look like they are peeking through the veil. Like some kind of creative, you know, some type of creation that was coming through the veil from another place. Now, the rulers of the air are trying to get out of our prison above us, aren't they? And below us, they're trying to, they're starting to creep out of the crevices of hell. These are the abominations of creation and the unclean spirits. Let's see what this article has to say about this gateway to hell in Turkey Manistan. It says the government of Turkey Manistan has announced that it plans to close the gates of hell. Oh, okay. Closed for business. Let's put up a closed sign on the outside of gates of hell. It's closed now. The burning gas crater has been on fire for the past several decades following an incident with a Soviet drilling operation in the early 70s. Now the government appears to be looking for ways to put it out. Look at this thing. Whoa. That looks crazy. It doesn't even look like Earth, does it? The crater is located near the village of Darvaza. While known as the Gates of Hell, many also call Darvaza Gas Crater. Others refer to it as Door to Hell. The government has taken to calling it the Shining of Karakum. Wow. Locals say you can see the fiery glow of the crater for miles. Campers from all over the world continue to flock to these sites to experience it in full force. Despite its popularity with tourists, though, the government is looking for a way to put it out. So, basically, they're going to find a way to put this thing out. They haven't really shared any plans about how they're going to do this. But, uh, what, are they going to put a giant ice cube in it? I don't know. It's, so, this isn't a natural phenomenon. There was some kind of uh, accident or something, drilling accident. Thing caught fire and they really could never put it out. Now, let's get into some of our last stories for this morning. Now, we all know who Jeff Bezos is. Well, apparently he wants to live forever, but not with Jesus. Let's read this. Jeff Bezos wants to stop aging. What does that even mean? Well, dude, I think you're a little late. He's on a mission to conquer aging. He's just recruited Hal Barron from Glaxo. Oh, of course from Glaxo, right? Same place that uh, that guy was from who did Warp Speed for Thump. He was from Glaxo. So they're going to hook up with his lab. And it's an ambitious new anti-aging company with billions of investment. Remember uh, that Nygaard guy? Well, same thing. He was looking into all this stuff as well. His name spells dragon backwards. So what does science really say about this? Could we beat aging? Aging isn't just a change in how we feel or look. It happens on a cellular level. In the lab culture dish, adult skin cells divide roughly 50 times before stopping. Now we understand why we die. You die because of sin. The Bible tells us this is why we die. Okay? And there's really no way to stop it. I mean, the best thing you could do is try to live your life really great. And, you know, serve God. And that might extend your life because you're not sinning as much and maybe you'll live longer. The 
the uh, controllers who live long, because we know that they live a long time too, they do it by cheating. They try to find a different way through, like the thieves and robbers that the Bible mentions. Aging is also evident in our genes. Our genetic material is modified over time. Chemicals can be attached that change which genes are switched on or off. I believe also the elite are able to live longer because they know all the pitfalls that they've put out there for all of us to take our lives earlier and they stay away from those things without telling us. So apparently he's looking for a way to stop aging. Now this whole article is just talking about aging. They're not talking about what he wants to do about it. Bizarre. So there's that. Now, I thought this story was interesting because they had to come up with a plausible explanation to account for how so many people got sick with Omicron so fast at the exact same time. We were on here live talking about it when I got sick and like a bunch of you got sick at the exact same time, but you live hundreds of thousands of miles away. Let's read this. Is Omicron the fastest spreading V. Rus known to humankind? Mostly true. Wow. We must be special. As, you, as the variant of Vidco rapidly made its way around the world, infiltrating 89 countries, within three weeks of its first being identified in late November, it became the fastest spreading variant since the start of the spamdemic. Wow. Okay, so this is their little cover story as to as to how this all happened all at the same time. Didn't come from anywhere else. It came through transmission. All right. Now, looks like we got a win in New York. I don't know if this is New York State. It probably is for those of you that live in New York. And I'm hoping that other states will follow. But basically, a judge strikes down the state mask mandate. So if you're in New York, you no longer have to wear a mask. Let's read this. New York judge struck down the state's mask mandate on Monday, one week before it was due to expire. That's good news. Ruling the governor overstepped her authority, imposing a rule that needed to have been passed by the state legislature. Judge Rademacher of New York uh, found that the state legislature last year curbed any government's ability to issue decrees such as mask mandates amidst declared state of emergency it was the latest setback for executive branch officials at state and federal levels. So, good things happening in New York. And here's our last story. This is a follow-up story on that unidentified animal that was found out in the cold and alone in the snow. They're actually running DNA tests on it. Now, many of you thought that this was probably a dog or a coyote, or some people mentioned some other breeds that it could have been, but basically you said it's a dog with really bad mange. Let's see what this article has to say. Rescue awaits DNA results to help identify a emaciated animal under their care, dog or coyote. Now, the only reason why I'm thinking this might be something different and not an animal that they know about is because here you have all these animal people, right? These people work with animal, animal rescue, you know, and they can't identify it. And they've seen, they know what a dog with mange looks like. So why are they saying they don't know what this is? It says an animal rescue last week in Pennsylvania has experts stumped. Wildlife works in Mount Pleasant began treating an unidentified creature. Wow, they call it a creature on January 17th. After Christina Eighth of Fairfield Township found paw prints outside her home. I peeked outside the door whenever I noticed an animal on my left hand side and was so scared and so cold and shivering. So we already read all this part. Okay, so now it's saying no one at Wildlife Works, Wildlife Rehab, could identify the animal species with certainty because of the creature's poor health and physical appearance. Okay, I mean it could have such bad mange that it's unidentifiable. The staff has since taken samples from the animal for DNA testing to determine what species is under their care. 
could take up to four weeks, but there's the animal there. Yeah, it just kind of, you know, it almost looks like just a regular dog with, with mange, doesn't it? I'm thinking so. What do you think I am? Dog or coyote? Wildlife Works wrote with a photo of the animal on Facebook. This pup was admitted to us last night. Suspect it has mange and will be treated and be, will be treating it accordingly. We will be doing testing to confirm what it is. The animal is very timid, very scared, and not aggressive. I honestly can't definitively say what it is. But to err on the side of caution, since they can carry rabies, since it might be a coyote, they will be getting genetic testing done. Wow. So that's pretty much what I had for you guys today. I do have a very important show tomorrow. Very special show. Many of you will remember the TV series Fringe. So we've been talking about this mold thing. And so I searched all five seasons. I basically went through all of the synopsis for all five seasons for every single episode to see if there was a mold episode. And there absolutely was an episode about mold. And there was only one. So I watched it yesterday. And in the episode, they actually compare mold to a network. They talk about EMF fields, electromagnetic, which of course would be Jive G. And they talk about how the network can interact and draw power from humans. Is all this starting to sound familiar? Wow. Now, it's weird because it almost seems like the episode from Fringe was copied by the people who did the Super Deep movie, the Russian movie that just came out last year in 2020. It had almost the same themes repeating. There was a, a theme of cold. In one of the scenes in Fringe, they put the boy in a bathtub full of ice. And his name means snow. And it's the same thing in the Russian film. Because they're in the, they're in the Arctic. And the cold is what kills the mold. I mean, how is it that these themes keep repeating if they aren't real? Now, for those of you that know this, mold feeds off of jive G radiation. It actually excites the mold, causes it to grow faster, causes it to release mycotoxins. So there's something to see here. So I will see you guys all tomorrow with some of these clips from that fringe episode. I think it was season four or season three that I found it in. Let's go into the chat for a little bit. Now, finding that episode whet my appetite to begin digging a much more into the Fringe series. Because I'm sure there's all kinds of stuff in that series that's happening right now. Preparing our bodies for biodigital convergence. Yes, bioelectronics. Uh-oh, do we get knocked off? says one person watch. Okay, there it goes. For some reason, we had a drop off there. Bioelectronics. Remember we were talking about that a couple years ago when Warp Speed came out? Remember that? And everyone thought I was crazy. And I said, you guys, they're preparing to merge man and machine. And somehow it's going to link into these Pokemon stickers. And that guy, Salawi, who worked for Thump um, and basically headed up Warp Speed, he was at a whole past involved in bioelectronics. Well, that is how they're going to link us to the network. We are going to become the batteries for the network. And you'll see all this tomorrow in the decode that I'm going to do. It's unbelievable. They put a tinfoil hat on the boy's head. There's, there's actually two shots. In, in the in the uh, episode, the fungus gets one shot and the boy gets another shot. I mean, it's, it tells you right there. And this was all the way back in, let's see, do I have it pulled up here? Here's the episode here. Alone in the World, Fringe, from October 7th, 2011. 2011. So... 
We'll get into that tomorrow. Go back in here. Okay, let's read some of your comments here. I'm only just getting the mold thing, says Janet. Yeah, it's kind of new. It just kind of popped up. Hunger Games. Watch the video at the smoothie shop. Says someone. You shouldn't get a ticket or go to jail because you called somebody a name. I don't want to live in a world like that. Because, look, we get on here every day and talk to you guys about everything. Someone could misconstrue anything I say. I don't want to get a ticket in the mail. Someone calling me saying that they thought that my comment was racial. That's not the world we want to live in. All right. Hager saw Lockwood's books on Thump. Yeah, we covered those. Speech crimes. Yes. That's not what happened, says Boru. So, tell us what happened. Boru's going to enlighten us on what really happened. What else do we have here? What do I think about England dropping the mandates? What happened here too? Eventually it will, but unfortunately, I believe this is just a segue into a different phase. They're, they want to switch gears now. They kind of, well, they achieved a lot of their objectives, but now it's over. The op is over. And so... At this point, they're going to switch gears. So just expect something else to take its place. You know how they always talk about, um, you know, a vacuum, a power vacuum, and how they don't just take people out of power, that there has to be something to fill that power void or vacuum. Well, that's pretty much what's going to happen with this. They're going to start to ratchet this down, and they'll just go into another phase of something else. It might not even have anything to do with stickers or, you know, VidCo19. But understand that something else is coming. Something else is coming. So thanks for the question, Jim. I mean, obviously it's going to provide some relief to the people who are living under those mandates, but they will just fill the void with something else. Or they'll do a trade. They'll say, okay, we're going to stop the mandates, but then we're going to get more hardcore on, you know, passports or something. They'll just do that. All right. Okay, so what, what does Boro say here? Let's see, he's got a further information on this story. A grown man was throwing stuff at teens, working at a smoothie shop and losing shit. Okay, so what? Again, get him for that. Yeah, that was bad, but not... The whole point of reading that story was the subject matter of getting in trouble or getting a ticket for hurting someone's feelings based on their race. That's the point I was trying to make. I didn't say it was okay for someone to throw something at the people in the store. So, apparently you misunderstood the point of that story, Boru. Yes, he should have got a ticket for that, but not for hurting someone's feelings racially. I don't want to live in that world. I want to live in a world where if someone says something to me that's racially motivated, I'll tell all my friends and I'll never go back to that store again and neither will need any of my friends. And you hurt that person economically. But shouldn't, you know, call the cops and they shouldn't get a ticket for saying that. That shouldn't even have been part of the story. And that's why I read the story. 
It wasn't because it was okay to throw a drink on a girl. So anyway, we're going to leave that alone now because I think I made my point. All right. Okay, you guys. I appreciate you guys coming out. We'll see you tomorrow with this fringe episode about mold. You guys are going to be blown away. Now, if you haven't watched the super deep movie decode the russian film from 2020 about scientists that drill down into the super deep bullhorn in russia and they find this mold that's trying to get to the surface if you haven't watched that decode you got to watch that because uh that's going to link in directly to tomorrow's show and you're going to see the similarities between the plots it's it's literally like they copied the plot from from french or this is all very real and these themes are just simply the truth hiding in plain sight all right you guys i love you guys uh, boro hope you feel better and you guys all have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow